Yo, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> like, deck profile, YCS Fort Worth, double. <laughs> I was really sad he uh, didn't do that well with commentating. I, I know they, they uh, what was it, the two skinny guys, they impersonated him. Dude, those Wait. two guys sound are the same person. Yeah. They one sound one. exactly the same. <laughs> they they <laughs> were really funny when they did the lithium impression. It was like spot yeah, on. Know, yeah. Was that Leonardo or I forget his name? Yeah, Whatever, dude. Uh, Alright, so this is, God, almost a month later from Dallas. Um, I handed my deck profile to someone that did not get posted. So instead of people are, what, four comments that asked for a deck profile. Um, instead of them just messaging me, which I did send to my list. Um, why not do a deck profile? It's apparently the man for 150 average viewers. <laughs> um, so I'll show you what I played at um, Dallas. It's obviously a month ago, so there's um, the main deck actually hasn't changed, and even with the new ban list, I haven't. I tried testing out malicious. It, I didn't enjoy it. It it was really cool and it raised the ceiling slightly, but it didn't really do much in the headway and consistency of the deck. So I decided to just kind of keep the deck the same. Um, so without further ado, here's my deck list. Um, one tour guide. It's still like the best opener. It gets you into um, Rhino, which um, gets you into Sabres, which gets you into essentially just like a one and a half card um, Dante Cherubini, which is obviously great. So I did keep up with the same ratios. Um, I think for my UDS deck profile, there was only a change of two cards, which over the course of the time since the UDS, there has been different iterations of this, but it's it's been pretty much the same. Like when people ask me for deck lists, I'll just send them a link to the video and be like, here you go. I don't feel like doing it, but yeah, one target. Uh, it's absurd. Two Rhino, still really good cards. It's great uh, extenders. I thought at one point cutting it down, but it's still really nice just to have as your normal summon just to get you into Sabres or even send a Libic. Um, so obviously I play Libic. Anytime I sign them out now, it always comes up, so I'm always begrudging when I have to do it. Um, Farfa, concession to my opponent's plays. Um, if I unfortunately have to make a Beatrice pass, then this is a card obviously worth sending. So it's still in here. It's really good for breaking boards and going second. Um, and then we have one of the best burning best monsters ever, Seer. Um, it's, it's just really great for extending your plays, making combos, everything like that, chain blocking, and then Graph. Uh, the card that really helps facilitate your uh, opening plays and everything like that. So, obviously, these two don't really need to be much said about. These two, like, obviously, if you really want it, you could cut this card, but it does come up. Um, and something that I pointed out to a very well-renowned uh, BA player that, I guess, well-renowned in the sense that people know who he is, not accomplishments, but um, Libby can summon anything that is a level 3 Dark Fiend type, so obviously you can summon Sabres if you have it in your hand, and you don't really want to send Graph or something like that, so it is possible, and obviously Rhino can send Sabres, and Rhino can send Libic to Special Liz, Rhino's just great. Uh, I did cut Sulkius, I was really begrudging about that, but it came up too many times where it just sit dead in my hand, and I do kind of miss having the ability to discard for him and summon him and make that uh, natural Beatrice, but it's just not needed anymore. Um, keeping on with the trend. Three Mathematician and the 1-0 line. So these cards are great. They are essentially Tour Guide um, in the sense that they do your one card combo. Tour Guide is just obviously better because it gets you into Sabres, which if you don't have another level of three extender, this is your level three extender. So obviously I'll prefer to have Tour Guide at three instead of um, Mathematician at three, just because I could probably cut this card if Tour Guide was at three. But um, no, Mathematician's great. It's, it's even better when... Um, uh, Dimension Shifter's now been in the meta where I can normal summon this and uh, they chain Dimension Shifter and then I just send a Giant Rex and Giant Rex summons himself and um, it, it's it's strong in a lot of certain cases where at least it's not sending his cost to activate the effect so I can um, essentially manipulate whatever card I want to and then obviously it's even better bait for um, hand traps because I have cards like this, Gauss um, this is by far like the MPV of the deck Anytime I think about adding certain cards in here, I, I try and make the cards serve at least two or three purposes. Gallus in the deck serves at least five purposes. Um, it's a free special summon, it's an earth, it's a different typing for um, Curious, 
It is level 3, which makes it even great because I'm trying to play as many level 3 as possible. Then it also does the burn damage, which helps me out in time. Which the goal of the deck is not to get into time, but we obviously know if I am in time, I'm going to take full advantage of Gallus. So this card, by far, is one of the best cards in the deck. Obviously, the real best card of the deck is like Block Dragon, but this card is a very close second. Um, and then I play Further Extenders in the form of Psychic Tracker and Wielder. As I mentioned before in a previous deck list, I only play one of each because they are only once per turn, and I'd rather not see multiples and not be able to play with the cards in my hand. All the cards I play with, I really try and make sure I can play them at any given point in time and make sure they're always useful. But like I said, Mathematician is still amazing. I tried out two Mathematician and two Scrap Recycler, then I was playing Gizmech, and I might be at a point where I might do that again, but it, it came down to I was opening hands with too many normal summons, and I didn't like that. And I could add the Gizmech back in and just do three Mathematician and the one Scrap, but it kind of follows the same kind of trend. And the only thing Scrap really has over Mathematician is the fact that it can do its effect off special. So it might be a worthwhile card to look forward, but at the moment this is how it's staying and this is how I like it. Um, six Dangers. I don't really think I need to speak about this. Other people aren't really fans of Nessie. Um, I enjoy Nessie just because it has the dual purpose of I can link it away for the BLS link and it'll be unaffected by, or it can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. And then the fact that it also gets hit, I'm just deck thinning. So, and then also helps me fix hands. So the card's great, I still find it necessary, and these two don't really need to be much said. They're level threes, they're dangerous, they're absurd. Um, moving on to the best card in my deck. I saw people making posts, and I know it's kind of unfair to uh, call out certain posts that are made online that sound stupid, but I heard people like, oh, I'm going to just play two block dragon because of the new link. Or not the new link, the new XC's monster. So I'll just search it. I'm just like, why would you not want to max out on this card? You always want to see this card. There's, and even in certain scenarios where the game's grinding, uh, block dragon search block dragon. You're just missing out on free advantage not, by not playing the max amount of copies. And then you're also missing out on consistency by not playing the max amount of copies. Then you're also hurting your board state by having to link away, or not link away, two XC's for two level fours. Uh, for a rank 4 that only lets you search a block dragon, which sounds really, really not good in my opinion. So How are you making that without block dragon searching Gigantes anyway? Exactly. So you have essentially, um, God, I want to say 8 level 4s in the deck, 4 of which are the Gigantes and Giant Rex, and then you have 2 damage juggler, because my build still plays damage juggler, hat trigger, and trick clown. So it's it's viable on the lowest amount of viable. I remember in a build I played back in um, uh, April, I played King of the Feral Imps just because I thought it would be funny to make a rank 4 and search Snake just to help facilitate my combos. But it came up, I think, once in like 30 games. It, it was just... You're, the point of this deck is attempting to make Saryuja, and if you're using two monsters to help uh, facilitate searching this card when you could have just linked it away, and attempted to draw a Saryuja, or just make plays that way and send it off curious, it's, it, it doesn't sound optimal. Um, continuing on, three Gigantes and Fossil Dina. I see people playing Rock Spirit, and I think that's absolutely idiotic. The logic is somewhat there for saying that um, when you get to a Saryuja play, you want to have a different names, but in the whole entire six to seven months of me playing that deck, that has never, ever come up once. And since traps are so heavy, or stun decks are so heavily um, in the meta, having this card is just infinitely better at all times in Rock Spirit. You want a card that can blow up all the back row on like battle destruction, so I, I can't think of any conceivable um, time where Rock Spirit would be better, except for the one that just has never come up for me. Um, and then there are times where I do open multiple of these, and it is unfortunate, but it's just so necessary to play four targets because if these are all gone, then you can't search this. And like, if these are all gone, then you can't search this. You have to equal eight. So the point is to be able to search at least two um, because searching one is just not optimal and it's, it's not good. Um, and then continuing with the level four, giant Rex, and then other earth targets. So Dotscaper is absurd. I've already mentioned how much I love this card. Um, it's really neat whenever you play this deck for a while because you, you start appreciating just smaller interactions and how much they facilitate extending your combos and playing around certain cards. So this is definitely one of those cards. And it is by far one of my favorite cards in the deck. Um, Giant Rex, it's absurd. It's a level four, can banish, summon, anything like that, summon. So 
amazing, glow up bulb, it makes snappies. What more do I need to say? And then Mills, even better. Um, one Distrudo, this was cut uh, down from two, where I felt myself not needing as much. So I find it good at one. It, it may honestly even be cut at one point, but it's still treating me pretty well at one. So, um, you know, I can set it off curious, anything like that. And these are essentially, like I mentioned before, placeholder cards. So I did try taking these out for uh, Malicious, and I found myself missing them still. Um, Malicious, like, it's the main point someone brought against me. It's like, these cards are also bricks if you draw them, and I, they're, they're not. They're, you're able to normal summon them. In Malicious, you can't normal summon unless you're tributing, so you're already going to be behind in that. So it's just, if you have to normal summon these, it's good. Then at the same time, they're getting the same amount of value, essentially, that Malicious would generate. So, it and plus Malicious is dark, and I try and find dual purpose in most of the cards. I think this is the only card that doesn't really have a dual purpose. Um, so, it's, I'm not a fan. Um, and then after everything I just said, it kind of sounds like I'm stepping on my own feet here by playing this card, Hydrolander. It's, um, it, it makes me so unhappy to play this card, but I do it. It's a level 8 for a card that I'll mention soon that I don't see many other decks playing. Um, it, it's good going second, just being able to push through. It's better against like certain stun decks. Like this against Altergeist is just really, really strong. Um, I don't have any way to modulate my danger monsters, so obviously uh, hitting them late game that you know I can't summon it, I can't play with it, I can't do anything with it. So it does really sound like I'm stepping on my own feet by playing this card, and it may come out in future builds just because I do kind of really miss Gizmek, but it's, it's just one of those sacky cards that if it comes up, you're just in such a better place than you were before, so that's how I feel about that. Um, Seconds Light, still playing it. I tried it without it, wasn't <laughs> pleased with it, so I, I moved it back. Um, yeah, that pretty much completes the main deck. It's 40 monsters and 3 spells. <laughs> So 43 card deck, and I've been happy with that number for quite some time. I haven't felt the need to uh, go up or down. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the main deck. So the extra deck has changed just slightly, and it probably will keep continuing to change from that new IP card. Um, it, it could have a spot in the extra deck. I'm already trying to figure out where I could do with it, or where I could put it, but uh, the Dante, the Beatrice, which may come out soon, and Cherubini. Cherubini is absurd. Um, it's my opening play, and then Dante is the next step right after that. Beatrice, it comes up so rarely, and in certain uh, situations, it doesn't really help you, because if you're making it, you're probably losing. Um, so that's my opinion on that. And then Levier, such a great card. If your or your uh, Fossil Knight gets banished, even better. If they go um, uh, Ash on Glow Bulb, which a Striker player has done, um, then you can just banish the glow bulb with block dragon and then levy air back the glow bulb and then make your nappies that way. So most of the time when that has happened, I just kind of laugh at them and then make this. Um, yeah. And then the, uh, link twos, these were, um, what I was playing at Dallas. This was a, um, what was it called? A Cyframe Lord Lambda. Because in testing it came up where I need to make a uh, monster that was not a fiend. So I was playing V-Cop before, but I took it out for a Lambda last minute. Because one, it has more attack. Two, the token effect never really came up anymore. And three, I like I said, I needed a different typing to be able to make an Avermax under uh, there can only be one. So it did come up, and that's why I made the last minute change. And I'll also say beforehand, too, I remember before Dallas, I had four different deck lists to turn in. And uh, I was just such at a loss playing against one of my friends just really makes it like difficult to have confidence in this deck because most of the people I play with, they know how to beat the deck. So it's like, they, they don't play as a typical player would. And that's a big hindrance to me. So I was quite fearful going into Dallas. And uh, yeah, so, but now this card is Appalooza, um, which I find to be much better, but it doesn't really stop Nibiru in my opening plays. I remember someone was like, they saw my field and they were like, oh, I thought you were going to make an Appalooza there, so I Nibiru'd. No matter what, on my fifth summon would be my opportunity to make the Appalooza. So if they're fearing the Appalooza anyway, they Nibiru. I'm already like, this card's, it, it doesn't make logical sense to prepare for a Nibiru if at the point I would try and make it would be my sixth summon. 
So it's just to, you know, give the middle finger to my friends to know when to Nibiru. Um, curious, hell of a card. Absolutely love it. Um, it's even cooler against boards nowadays with the Orcus where they make uh, Topologic, where I can just summon this, send something for free, then Topologic will blow this up and I get to add that a card. So, it's even better. Um, BLS Link, this card's never coming out. <laughs> this card's amazing at Striker. It's almost free wins. It's even better after they make their uh, Ningirsu. So, it's this card just really, they can't do anything unless they're making, what, like a Bomber and attacking over it or headbutting it. Um, it's amazing. Two Star Yuja, unfortunately. It's been Two Star Yuja for quite some time. It's been Two Star Yuja probably since, like, August. So, it's... I, I, I wish I could play three, obviously, um, but the, the extra deck is so very tight that two is all I can fit. And then Boral Sword, it's OTK, so it's real necessary. Uh, having to go second, I can at least make it seem like I'm intended to go second. So people who don't know this deck, which at this point would be very surprising because a dumbass makes a post about it on Zodiac Duelist every single day saying, look what I discovered all by myself. Um, Avermax. So, this is the point where I'll add in this card. So, I've been playing Dingirsu for probably about a month and a half now, and these cards are functionally the same in the sense of my end board. So, these cards stop Fossil Dyna from being destroyed, which is really integral into the uh, end board. So, this card, obviously, you can only attack him. This card, you can only, you can detach when a card be destroyed. So, if I make this with, um, uh, the Fossil Dyna and Nappies, they can't Ogre, because I'll just detach. They can attack over Dyna, because I'll just detach. So like I said, these cards are functionally the same, and that's where the um, Hydrolander will come into play, where I'll summon it kind of early in my combo, and then even if I activate Effect, I can attempt to destroy a monster that's under Cherubini, which it won't die, or I can target Block Dragon, which it won't die. So that's the useful part of playing Hydrolander. It's just a level 8 that I can... Uh, make it with a block dragon to make this guy. So like I said, it's functionally the same, and they're pretty interchangeable when you're making your end board. And then Nappies. It's Nappies, free wins. So I probably won't show you the side because my side is so drastically different by now from uh, Dallas. That's not even really worth mentioning. Like I, I played no material, I can mention that. Um, I played Lancia, I still play Lancia though, but I played Imperial Order in my side. And then I played Evenly Match, which Evenly Match will probably come out, because every single time I got all right, Evenly Match, they would just have uh, Lancia. So, that was great. But yeah, that pretty much completes it.